I have to admit, I've been on a pride fight binge as of recent. So much so that I created my own list of the greatest MMA fights to go down in the Japanese promotion. I chose these fights based on how competitive they were in comparison to performances that were really impressive. Because for me, those were the most exciting fights in pride. And before we get going, shout out to the undisputed members of my Patreon. You can get early access to videos like these and a shout out before every video if you join my Patreon today. Now let's get to the video. At number 10, I have Antonio Rodrigo Noguera vs Bob Sapp. At this time, Noguera was the pride heavy champion and had a record of 16-1-1 going into the fight with Sapp, who just entered the sport after a career in football and wrestling. Although he won his first two MMA fights, Big Nog was the obvious favorite to win. The fight had a special role that banned knees on the ground due to the 127 pound weight difference between the fighters. And that difference showed immediately when Noguera attempted a takedown only to be stuffed and lifted by Bob who Ganso bombed him to the mat. Somehow Big Nog survived but the size difference proved to be too much as even though he managed to get on top for a moment, Sap reversed the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu expert with ease. That's when he began to throw heavy ground and pound and had Noguera in serious trouble. Big Nog attempted to take down the fight and attempt submissions, but Bob was able to deny all the attacks due to his sheer strength. It was a dominant first round by Sap, but he was definitely tired going into the second. And although Noguero was badly beaten, he successfully mounted Bob and finished him off with an armbar. It was an amazing comeback win for Big Nog who had to overcome the most adversity he ever faced in his career up till that point. Number 9, I got Don Fry vs Yoshihiro Takeyama. Much like the last fight on this list, it was a freak show of a fight. Fry was 14-1 and, and had won multiple UFC tournaments, in comparison to Yoshihiro who was 0-2 going into this fight. But this is one of the most famous fights on this list because the two fighters went at it almost immediately by clinching up and throwing a bunch of right hands. It was like watching a hockey fight. Defense was absolutely non-existent. Eventually Don began to win the exchanges as he started to switch it up. After all this, Takeyama was busted up bad, but he managed to suplex Fry and on the way up connected with a big knee before duking it out again. All technique was out of the window. It was basically a clinch version of Rock'em Sock'em Robots. Regardless, it was a fun battle that constantly shifted in momentum. But everything changed when Yoshihiro attempted another suplex. But this time Don ended up on top and began to throw ground and pound before the ref stepped in. This was one of those fights you have to show someone who's getting into MMA. At number 8 is Antonio Rodrigo Noguera vs Mirko Krokop. It was a fight for the interim heavyweight championship. Noguero was now the former Pride heavyweight champion with a record of 21-2-1. Mirko on the other hand was 7-0-2 but had a lot of momentum going into this fight. And that's what he showed when he was able to deny all of Noguero's attempts to take down the fight. All while attacking from a distance with powerful kicks. At the end of the first round, Mirko connected with a left high kick that dropped Big Nog. But luckily the bell saved him and in round 2, he finally secured a takedown. From there, he mounted Krokop and finished him off with an armbar. It was a crazy comeback just like the Bob Sapp fight, but this one was way more impressive because Krokop was considered as a top heavyweight prospect at that point. Number 7 is the second fight between Dan Henderson and Vanderlei Silva. The two fought previously at Pride 12 in a back and forth battle that saw Vanderlei win by decision. At Pride 33, he was now the middleweight champion and taking on Henderson who was now the Pride welterweight champion. So if that matchup wasn't huge enough, adding belts to the equation made it even bigger. Like the first fight, the two began swinging immediately, and you knew that if any of their punches connected, the other man was going to be out. Dan was winning more of the exchanges on the feet in the first round. But at the end, he got rocked and looked to be in trouble before coming back with punches that rocked Silva as well. Hendo really began to take over in the second with takedowns and ground and pound. Silva attempted an armbar, but Dan retaliated with heavy ground and pound to close the round. The third was back and forth as Vanderlei denied Hendo's takedowns, but Dan connected with a nice spinning back fist. The fight soon ended after Hendo connected with a big left hand that knocked Silva out. He finished him off with a Hendo bomb and thus became the first man to hold two belts in different weight classes simultaneously. At number 6, I have Don Fry vs Ken Shamrock. So these two have had huge beef ever since Ken beat Don's friend and training partner, Dan Severn, back at UFC 6. Immediately, they clinched up and threw heavy shots to the body. Fry was winning more of these exchanges, but Shamrock retaliated by dropping for an ankle lock where he transitioned to a toehold and a knee bar. Both were super tight and anyone else would have tapped, but Don survived and was limping back to his corner at the end of the round. Fry was the aggressor in the exchanges. He even knocked down Shamrock at one point as the two swung wildly at each other. Don was now on top and throwing heavy ground and pound, but Ken reversed the position and attempted another ankle lock that was once again very tight. But Fry withstood the pain and attempted an ankle lock of his Zone. The fight looked seconds away from one of their ankles being snapped off, but it made it to the judges where Don Fry won the split decision. It was a grueling fight that took a lot out of both fighters, because after this, they were never the same. In the number 5 spot, we got Vanderlei Silva vs Quinton Rampage Jackson 2. The rivalry between these men was at an all-time high as they fought each other for a second time after Vanderlei won the first showdown with heavy knees. But in this fight, Silva's middleweight championship was on the line. The first round was a grueling back and forth fight that saw both men clinch and trade knees. When they separated, they stood 
toe-to-toe -to, -toe to exchange shots. Silva was definitely the aggressor, but Rampage managed to take him down and throw ground and pound. When the ref stood the fight back up, Vanderlei continued to press forward with his striking. But Rampage connected with a big right hand that dropped him, and although he wasn't able to finish the fight, he ended the round on top throwing ground and pound. The high pace action continued in the second where the two swung at each other before Rampage secured a takedown. Only to be reversed by Vanderlei, who stood up and connected with some nice foot stomps and soccer kicks. When they both stood up, Silva hurt Rampage with a big right hand before pressing forward with big knees, with one of them knocking Rampage out cold onto the ropes. Vanderlei defended his belt and the two buried the hatchet. Number 4 I put Mauricio Shogun Hua vs Antonio Rogerio Nogueira. The rivalry between Chute Box and Brazilian top team went down when these two fought in the quarterfinals of the 2005 Pride Middleweight Grand Prix. Shogun was the favorite going into this fight, which was expected to be a striker vs grappler battle. But he was the one who secured the takedown early, and Nogueira retaliated by sending Shogun to the mat with a big right hand. Although he was able to survive, Shogun looked wobbly on his feet. Yet he managed to come back and connect with shots before taking a little knockdown again. But Nogueira attempted an armbar off his back. Shogun got out and when the fight got back to the feet, Nogueira was picking him apart with shots which was impressive considering he was known as a ground fighter. But then Shogun connected with a left hand that knocked Rogerio down and he was a foot stomp away from being out cold. Near the end, Shogun pressed forward more with his striking and continued to control Lil Nog on the ground which was impressive on his part. After the back and forth war, Shogun Hua won the fight by unanimous decision. At number 3, I put Kazushi Sakuraba vs Hoist Gracie. The rivalry between these two began after Sakuraba beat Hoist's brother, Hoyler, by Kimura. Not only was it the first loss for the Gracie family in decades, but now many began to question whether Gracie Jiu Jitsu was enough to beat well rounded fighters like Sakuraba, whose foundation of submissions comes from catch wrestling and shoot wrestling. So Hoist signed with pride and fought Sakuraba under special rules requested by his brother, Hori and Gracie, which included unlimited rounds and no judges. Also, the referee was not allowed to stop the fight as only knockout, submission, or towel throw was the way to win. Even though Sakuraba thought these demands were inappropriate, he still accepted the fight. Hoist was aggressive early by trying to take the fight down to the ground, but Sakuraba denied it and attacked with both an arm lock and a knee bar. The knee bar was really tight, but Gracie was saved by the bell. The entire fight was Hoist trying to bring the fight down with takedowns or pulling guard, but Sakuraba striking both on the feet and in Gracie's guard was doing a lot of damage, especially with the leg kicks. Not only was the unlimited time working against the tiring Hoist, but his gi was to Sakuraba's favor as he used it for better grip when controlling Gracie. After 6 rounds and 90 minutes of action, Hoist's corner threw in the towel after he told them that he was unable to walk due to the damage inflicted to his legs. Sakuraba won the fight and opted to fight again minutes after in the next round of the tournament. In the second spot on my list, I have Nick Diaz vs Takanori Gomi. It was Nick's first fight with the promotion as he was taking on Gomi who was not only the pride lightweight champion, but one of the pound for pound best fighters in the world. The fight was at catchweight of 160 pounds which meant the title wasn't on the line. Takanori started off as the aggressor by securing the takedown and maintaining top control. When they got back up, the two stood toe to toe and traded shots before Gomi connected with a right hand that floored Diaz. But he survived and when he got back up, they began trading again but this time Nick was connecting with the more accurate shots. And as the fight continued, you could see Takanori quickly fading as he had no answer for the volume from Diaz. His hands were fully down by the end of the round and he was eating a lot of shots. Nick's momentum carried on to the second round as he continued to pick Gomi apart on the feet. Credit to Takanori for taking so much damage and not going down. He even tried to tell the ref to stop the fight due to the damage on Nick's face. But Diaz continued to press forward, until Gomi secured a takedown which seemed to have saved him from standing with Nick. But Diaz immediately secured a go go plata off his back that forced Takanori to tap. This win was huge for Nick Diaz. But unfortunately, Nick tested positive for marijuana in the post fight drug test. The Nevada State Athletic Commission changed his win to a no contest. Now before I get to my pick for the best fight in Pride FC history, I want to give some honorable mentions. That includes Josh Barnett vs Antonio Rodrigo Noguera, Mirko Krokop vs Vanderlei Silva 2, Fedor Emelianenko vs Antonio Rodrigo Noguera 3, Fedor Emelianenko vs Kazuyuki Fujita, Fedor Emelianenko vs Kevin Randleman, Kazushi Sakuraba vs Hoyler Gracie, Kazushi Sakuraba vs Hanzo Gracie, Kazushi Sakuraba vs Carlos Newton, Vanderlei Silva vs Quinton Rampage Jackson 1, Vanderlei Silva vs Dan Henderson 1. So my pick for number 1 is Fedor Emelianenko vs Mirko Krokop. This was a fight a long time in the making as both men established themselves as two of the best in the world prior to their showdown in 2005. Fedor's heavyweight championship was also on the line. And even watching this fight in the present day, you still get a sense of how huge it was. Emelianenko immediately pressed forward to close the distance and avoid Krokop's deadly kicks. But Krokop connected with some nice counters of his own and avoided being tied up against the ropes. Sort of like a bull and a matador, which made the fight super intense. Soon the pace increased and the two began to throw shots that backed the other up before Fedor secured the takedown. After Emelian Ankle landed some ground and pound, the ref stopped the fight to check up on his broken nose from Mirko's left hand. But as the action continued, Emelian Ankle finished the round on top. And that momentum carried
carried through the fight as Fedor continued to secure takedowns and maintain top position. But when on the feet, Prokop landed some nice kicks to the body of Emelianenko. But Fedor connected with some nice shots as well. Overall, you knew you were watching the highest level of MMA. After 15 minutes, Fedor Emelianenko won the unanimous decision. But it was definitely more difficult for him to get the win in this fight than it was in his previous ones. And with all this hype prior to the matchup, it's amazing how it not only lived up to it, but how much it surpassed it. My name is Keon and this is my take on the 10 best fights to happen in Pride FC. Do you agree, disagree, or have something else to add? Please put it in the comments down below because I love to read it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell for more content like this. But that's all out for now, so I'll see you in my next one.